What is going on guys? My name is Kenji and welcome back to my channel. Hopefully it's not the first time that you're watching one of my videos, but just in case it is, I'm a fourth year medical student and biomedical science graduate studying King's College London. And in this video, we'll be taking you guys through exactly how I go about making an exam revision timetable. What's really, really important in university is to make sure that you know exactly every single day what you'll be revising to make sure that you're completely prepared for that exam day. So I'll be taking you guys through exactly how I do that on my laptop. A lot of people like to draw it out on a piece of paper and you can do the exact same uh, method that I'm doing now on paper, but I I kind of prefer to have it electronically on my laptop as well. So let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you guys my screen straight away. All right, so hopefully you guys can see my screen now. Uh, I actually use Google Calendar to make my uh, revision timetable, but you can use whatever calendar you want, whether that's your like Apple one or not. Um, I use Google Calendar. What you want to start off by doing first off is to tick uh, all of the boxes for your other calendars um, off. Make sure that your timetable is completely clear like this. What we're going to do uh, next is go ahead and create a new calendar. And what we're going to call this is a uh, revision exam timetable. Okay, so create a calendar. The reason why I do that is it's very nice to just take away everything off to have a very clear uh, schedule for your exams. And also once you're done with this exam schedule, you can go ahead and just delete it straight away to get rid of it. Um, but now it's made, let's go ahead and actually start adding to this. Okay, so the next thing you wanna do is to go ahead and actually add to your uh, calendar the big day, the exam day. What you wanna be focusing all your energy on is that single day. So the first thing you wanna do is go ahead and add the day. So I'm gonna hypothetically put it from uh, for four weeks from now. So that's going to be uh, the 11th of February. So go straight away and add an event. Uh, so I'll add, add an event here called um, exam day. And I'll let that be the whole entire day. Okay, so have that saved. Go back to your calendar view. And that's the big day that we're all gonna be preparing for. And that's really important to have it in there straight away. After that, you wanna make sure you add um, all of your off days or all of your like weekends. If you know that on a certain day, you definitely, definitely will be busy, then make sure that you add it to the actual calendar and also to schedule in some time off. So maybe every week or so you wanna schedule in one day, it's completely up to you. Uh, for the purpose of the example, I'm gonna go ahead and schedule uh, a break every week. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So after seven days of straight revision, including today, I'm gonna to make the 21st um, uh, a day off and I'm gonna make that a different color. I'm actually gonna color code my days off. I'm gonna put those in pink, just so I know straight away that these are all my day, days off. So one there, uh, I'm, going, I'm going to uh, do one here as well. So after working again for seven days, um, and maybe one more as well. And yeah, one final day off on the 5th of February. Uh, again, just put it to pink so we know that's day off and that should be uh, enough for, for the exam. What I also wanna do, and this is personal to me, but it's also up to you if you wanna do this, I always add a recap day, the day before the exam. Uh, what that is essentially, you know, flying through all of my work, trying to work on all of the areas I find hardest. So once I've covered all the topics, all the modules, then I wanna come back on this recap day and just recap everything that I think um, I, I will struggle with on the exam. So let's put the recap day, the day before the exam, which is what I normally do. You obviously don't have to have this um, there if you don't want to, but that's just what I do. So I'm gonna add recap day and save that there. As well as my days off, as I said, if you know that for certain, you know, on one of those days is your mom's birthday or your cousin's birthday, go ahead and add that to your timetable so you know you can completely write off that day or maybe, you know, plan half a day to go out with your family or whatever. Make sure all of your, you know, write off days or your uh, relaxed days are all on the timetable so you can plan ahead of time. Now that we've added the recap day, for me personally, what I also wanna do is add two days of exam practice doing exam questions Again, this is completely up to you. Um, but if you want to, you know, add some exam practice into your timetable, go ahead and do that. I normally leave it for the last uh, kind of two days uh, before the exam. Uh, if you want to add it throughout, and um, that's fine, you can add that later. But straight away, I'm going to add the eighth and also the ninth as practice paper day. So I'll add practice paper day again, just today to practice real questions for the exam uh, using past papers. So I'm going to color code that green, and I'm going to make that go across two days. Okay, so just to recap, so far what we have in our calendar, we have the actual exam day when we'll be doing the exam. We have a recap day, the day before the exam, to kind of go over the last minute content that we might struggle with on the exam. And we also have um, our days off. So all the days that we think will be busy, you know, with our family or um, just days off to just do what you want to do. Those are all in the calendar as well. And lastly, we have two days also of, you know, practice paper days where we're actually going to be practicing past papers for the exam. So that's quite a lot added already. Let's go ahead and actually look at what we're going to do to add in all the lectures and all the modules that we need to cover and all the content to cover before the actual exam. So what's really important is to make sure that you actually have a list of uh, lectures or all the modules that you want to cover. So over here, as you guys can see, I have a note in Evernote 
where I have a list of all of my lectures and all of the modules I need to cover in order to, uh, to smash the exam. So uh, the title is uh, Medicine Year 3 Lectures. And then also I've color coded all of the modules. So the first module here that I need to cover is Trauma and Accidents. The next over here is Cancer and Clinical Genetics. This is the entire module. The next is Vascular, Cognition, Movements and Senses. And then lastly, Mental Health as well. So this is essentially a list of all of the lectures that I need to cover in time for the exam. And I'm gonna show you guys um, how we're gonna plan this into my actual timetable in order to make sure that I cover all of those and make sure that every single day I'm hitting the minimum number of lectures needed in order to, you know, to pass the exam and be ready for the exam. So what I'm gonna do first is to go back to our calendar, uh, which is over here. Uh, on the calendar, I wanna see how many free days I have now. So excluding all the days off, the practice paper days, all of those days, I wanna see how many free days I have so that I can go ahead and start to assign uh, modules and lectures for those particular days. Um, so calculating now, including today, I have one, two, three, four, uh, 17 in January, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So I essentially have 23 days um, excluding all the days off and stuff, which I can use to practice those modules. So I'm actually gonna write this down so I don't um, miss, mess up the numbers. So on a piece of paper, I'm gonna write 23 days to cover content. Okay, so 23 days to cover five modules. If we do 23 divided by five, that's actually four whole days per module in order to, to cover the content. So that's four days per module with three days left over. So all I did is 23 divided by five, which is four and a bit. Um, four times five is 20, which means we have three days left over that we can use later on. And I'll, and I'll tell you guys how we're gonna use those three extra days later on. So essentially we have four days per module. Well, that's four days, assuming that every single mod module is the same, every single module we're actually able to cover um, equally but that's not the thing I have modules which are a lot longer which have a lot more lectures to cover so I actually want it to be four days each module I actually want to give more days to the modules I find hard and the longer modules and give less day to the easier ones now what you need to do is to try and think how many lectures can you actually cover in a day you have to kind of if it's your first time doing it you kind of have to guess um, if it's not your first time doing it then you should kind of know yourself and maybe predict how many lectures you can cover a day at minimum and this is obviously going to um, change depending on whether or not you've covered the lecture before, whether you've already made notes for the lectures. This is gonna vary. Obviously, this is just a generic video to give you guys an idea of how you can plan it. But I personally know that I can probably cover around 10 to 15 lectures uh, per day. And what I mean by cover is to go through each lecture and make sure I learn the whole entire lecture, memorize the lecture, and then move on in preparation for the exam. So let's take a ballpark number of 10 lectures per day. So that means that looking at mental health over here, I can definitely cover mental health in one day because mental health actually has nine lectures. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, schedule mental health first. Another thing you guys can do as well is when you're scheduling these uh, modules um, for each day, what you can also do is schedule the hardest modules first. The reason why I say that is because, you know, if these are the hardest ones, you don't wanna leave them to the last minute, so the last final days of revision, you wanna make sure that you cover these as early as possible so you can give your time, so you, so you can give yourself more time to cover them if you need to. But, um, so that's something to think about. I'm not gonna do it um, in this example here. I'm just gonna show you guys how we can divide this up. So the first day, as I said, I can definitely cover uh, mental health. And I'm gonna give that a color. I'll give that, let's say, um, green. So I know that on this first day, I definitely will be covering mental health. And then after that, I can tick that off the box. Another thing to add before I carry on guys, is all of these boxes here and all, all, all of these kind of check boxes here, uh, what they actually signify is whether or not I've actually covered this module before. So before I actually start, you know, uh, covering these, these lectures, I wanna add a check box like this. I'm gonna add a check box for every single lecture so that as I go along and as I learn the lecture, I can just tick it off. And then after I can tick the whole entire module off um, in a checkbox up here, just to tell myself that I've completely covered this module, we're good to go. And that's really, really important, guys. This is all about, you know, keeping track of all the lectures that you've done, all of the lectures you have left, how many modules you covered, and especially medicine when you have like 200 lectures, it's really important to make sure that you're, you know, keeping this up to date, making sure that you don't skip any lectures and you do cover every single lecture and you're always up to date with your learning. So mental health is done. Let's go ahead and start off with now with trauma and accidents. So this is the trauma and accidents module here that yeah, you guys can see. And this whole entire module actually has 24 lectures, which means that it's gonna take um, roughly um, two and a half days to cover it if I do 10 lectures a day. Let's go ahead and try and actually, you know, stretch ourselves and do 12 lectures a day. So this is gonna take me essentially uh, two days to cover the whole entire module. If I do 10 lectures a day, I learn 10 lectures a day, uh, actually sorry, 12 lectures a day, then I should be able to cover all 24 um, uh, lectures 
at the end of two days. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this module to the calendar, going back to the calendar. So I'm gonna put trauma and accidents. Again, like we said, we're gonna put that across two days. Uh, so more options, I'm gonna change the color to this, and then we're gonna put it across two days. So now, so far, we have one module for mental health, two modules for trauma and accidents. I'm gonna go ahead and do this for every other module we have left. So cancer has 26 lectures. Again, that's roughly two and a half days. But again, we're gonna try to stretch ourselves and do uh, 13 lectures a day. So let's add cancer to our calendar as well. Okay, so you guys get the idea. I'm gonna go ahead and do this for the rest of the modules I have. Divide the total number of lectures that I have in that module um, by 10 to see how long it'll take to actually complete these lectures. Okay, so I've completely done that, guys. I've added all of the modules to the actual calendar. And just to recap what I meant, I know I may have said that really, really fast. Essentially, what I did is that if I estimate and I know that I'll cover around 10 lectures per day, and let's say the module has uh, 40 lectures, 40 divided by 10 is four, which means that's gonna take me four days to completely cover that entire module. And then once I do that calculation, I'm gonna go ahead and add it to my calendar, just so we have a mental image of roughly, you know, how long it should take me to cover all of these modules. Now, what's really, really important, guys, is once you have all of the modules in place, what you wanna do is have a good think and look at all of these modules and think, okay, I know that roughly if I do 10 lectures a day, this, this is roughly how long it should take me. But again, some modules might be harder, some might be easier, Easier. And if you know that there's one particular module that you struggle with, then you may want to give yourself extra time. So for example, for me, I personally know that the CMS module is very, very difficult. So although it should technically, by my calculations, take me four days to finish, I know that's probably not going to be the case. So I'm going to actually change that to five days uh, instead of four. Now for CMS, we have five days to go. Um, and that's really, really important for me because now I know that I have, you know, just enough time to cover CMS. What's really important, guys, is also not to take this as gospel, use this as a guide. So all I'm saying in my head is that I know that if I meet a minimum of 10 lectures per day, then I definitely, definitely, definitely will be able to cover all of the modules in time for the actual exam. Now, the reason why I set a minimum is, you know, because it is a minimum. Some days I may have nothing planned. I may have nothing to do. I may be sat at home all day. Maybe I'm in lockdown and maybe actually I can do 20 lectures instead of 10 and of course if you're able to actually do more on that day then don't sit at home and do nothing if you actually want to go ahead of time study more lectures that's really really good because then you can go ahead and free up your timetable in the future alternatively let's say I have a really 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 busy day I have you know um, I'm gonna hang out with my family or my friends I know that if I want to go and hang out with my friends and I want to do the thing I want to do then I have to make sure that I somehow do at least 10 lectures minimum in order to make it in time for the exam so that's a really key thing here it's not gospel you're able to change this depending on your circumstance what you're doing day to day uh, and it's just you know a minimum threshold and if you feel like you know what 10 lectures a day is too much then go ahead and give mod the modules more time as well if you feel like actually 10 lectures a day is really, really easy, then do more lectures and then recalculate how many days it'll take you to cover the rest of the modules. So when I actually made this calendar, it changes every single day depending on what I'm doing, depending on how I feel. But the main goal here is not to follow it, you know, word by word. It's to make sure that by the end of the actual, um, you know, revision period, you have definitely and you will definitely cover all of the modules. And just make sure that you're keeping all of that up to date in your mind to make sure that you don't actually, you know, run short with your revision period time. So once we've made the general skeleton so far, of our revision timetable. What I wanna do now is to go and see um, how many days I have left and free until the actual exam. So during the calculations, it looks like I have 10 free days left before the actual exam. And obviously I don't wanna leave those days free. I wanna make sure that every single day I'm uh, studying and I'm doing something. Now, uh, because we have 10 days left, what I wanna do is essentially add more um, times in my calendar where I can re where I can go over these lectures again to make sure that I, you know, I definitely have this in my mind. And this is going back to active recall, to space repetition, making sure that, you know, once I cover the modules once, I'm gonna recover it again in the future to make sure that it's stuck in my mind and I definitely, definitely will know it in time for the exam. So if I look at how many days it's likely to take me to finish all of these modules, uh, in total, that means that it should take me 11 days to cover all of these modules. But now if I wanna add a second round of recap of all of these single modules, rather than doing another 11 days, because I've already visited these modules and these lectures once already, I think it's it's fair to say that I can probably cover it all again in half the amount of time. So now what I wanna do is go ahead and edit my calendar by halving the number of days needed for each module and adding it to the rest of my calendar and the rest of the days that we have left. So on the next day here on the 27th, we should do a half day of mental health. I'm gonna go ahead and put mental health in. 
We should also have a trauma and accidents uh, covering one day rather than two days like before. So I'm gonna put trauma and health actually on this day here, but maybe slightly uh, on mental health as well. So trauma and accidents. And I'm gonna do that for the rest of the modules we have left. Right, so I've added all the modules again into my calendar. And now if we look back on my calendar, let's actually understand what it means. So essentially I know that in the first 11 days of my revision, I should be able to cover all of the modules in the year in the first 11 days. Um, also, I have a, a day off here, which is good to kind of split up my revision. Uh, once I've actually finished the 11 days, I've then added the same exact modules again, but rather than having it uh, in the same amount of time as last time, I actually divided that time by two. And the reason being is that by then I should already have known the modules very well. So essentially, if you look at the whole entire time, uh, by the exam day, we still have two extra spare days over here on the 6th and the 7th. What I'm going to do is actually leave those two days free. Um, so as I start my revision, I definitely will find some purpose for these two days. Maybe it's going to be going over, you know, some modules again, if I find it really, really hard and I find myself forgetting. Maybe I'll throw in uh, four days of, you know, doing the practice paper rather than two. Uh, maybe I'll throw in an extra day off. Um, I'm not entirely sure what I'll do those days, but what I want to do is make sure I have those days empty um, in case anything comes up. because I know that definitely something will come up in my timetable and it's good to have a few days leeway. So having a schedule like this really gives you a lot of flexibility in scheduling your lectures and ensuring you cover these lectures before your final exam day. But I want to start talking here, guys. It's been a very long video. I hope this has been beneficial for you guys. And if it has, please give it a thumbs up. Please make sure you're subscribed as well with notifications on. Leave a comment down below with any questions you have or any suggestions of what you want to see in the next videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.